In this video, we're going to take a look at um, a legal problem called trapping rainwater. So given n negative integers representing a elevation map where the width of each bar is 1, compute how much water it can trap after raining. So here you can see we have an array and the above elevation map, map uh, the black section is represented by array, this one right here. In each, in this case, six water units is represented by the blue section are being trapped. So here you can see we have zero, that means there, at this position, there's zero elevation point. And if there's one, that means there's one elevation point. There's not gonna be a water trap here because there's no elevation point on the left. So we need to have elevation point on the left and on the right to get the, um, to, to have water being trapped, right? So if there's no elevation point, and in this case, there's no water being trapped. So you can see here that there are total six units because we have one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? Pretty straightforward. And um, to do this problem, I'm going to teach you how we can do this in a brute force way. I think it's very, very important to understand how to do this brute force in a brute force approach. And then we can improve our time complexity down to a dynamic programming way where we can be able to bring time complexity down to a linear. But the space complexity is gonna be linear as well. So we also gonna, I'm also gonna teach you how we can do this in a using two-pointer technique, which we're going to bring the time, um, the space complexity down to a constant instead of linear. Um, this will be very, very important to know. Um, so let's start with the brute force approach. So the brute force approach are pretty, is pretty easy. All we're trying to do here is we're trying to, uh, if we were to calculate how many water units for each position in the array, right? For how many water units is each position in the array um, is, uh, is having, right? So in this case, the current position, let's say is this one right here, right? This, this position. To, def to define, to figure it out how many water units this position can um, this this position have all we're trying to do here is we're trying to find the left um, maximum value where right? the, the the left maximum elevation if there's no left maximum elevation then that's gonna be there there's no there's not not gonna be any water trapping right just like I talked about and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the maximum elevation point the max uh, the maximum elevation value on the left and the maximum um, elevation value on the right. In this case, the maximum left elevation is two. The maximum elevation on the right is three. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to find the minimum value between those two value. In this case, the minimum is two, right? Two is smaller than three. Once we find the minimum value, what we're gonna do is we're gonna minus the current height. And this will give us the um, number of water units that the current position can have, right? And then all we have to do is we have to increment the current um, number of water units for the current position um, onto, the, um, onto the sum, right? We get all the water units, um, how many water units for each and every single position in, uh, um, in the array. And then we get the sum of that and then we just return the sum, right? In this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, six water units, right? So this is gonna be the brute force approach because for each iteration, we have to find the, um, the, the maximum value on the left side and the maximum value on the right side. So this will give us a n squared time complexity, but a constant time in space. So what we can do instead to make this better is we can use a dynamic program. Basically, we're going to um, solve this problem by simply memoize, by simply memoize the um, all the all the maximum value on the left for each and every single position, and all the maximum value on the right for each and every single position in the given array. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to. So here's the base case. If the um, if the length is less than two. Right, if the length of the array is less than two, then we can guarantee that there's no water trapped, right? So there's no water being trapped because we need a left elevation and a right elevation. We need at least three um, space, right? Three elements in the array to work with because we need to have a left and a right elevation, right? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a left 
array to memoize, to basically iterate each and every single element to compare um, to compare the uh, maximum value, right? In this case, the maximum value that we have um, on the left so far at the current position. And then we also have a right array to keep track of the maximum um, value on the right for each and every single element in the array, right? So in this case, the given array, we want to find the maximum L um, for, let's say, for example, this one right here. So for this element right here, the maximum, uh, let's say this element right here, right? This element right here, the maximum value on the left is this one right here, right? The maximum L um, value on the right is this value right here. So we are constantly um, using a two array, right? We're using two arrays to keep track of the left and the right, right, for the current position, for the value, for the current value in the array, in the given height array. Then what we're going to do is we're just going to find the minimum for the current position, right? So find the minimum on the left and the right. Find the minimum max value on the left and the right, and then minus the current height will give us how many water units the current position in the array can have. Right in this case, we're going to get the left, so, uh, the the sorry the the maximum right, the maximum right value for the current position, and the maximum left value for left um, for the current position, minus the current height, will give us the how many water units for the current position can have, and then we just plus that um, onto our sum, and then we just um, return sum at the end, right? So this will give us a linear time complexity and also um, linear in space complexity as well. So it should be SPE, uh, SPACE, right, space. So constant, uh, sorry, linear in space. So this will give us a linear um, space complexity, but what we can do is we can use two pointers to optimize this solution, which is what I'm about to show you. Basically what we're trying to do is we're, we know the core um, core steps to solve the problem, right? All we need to do is we need to find if we were to find the how many water units for for the current position. What we need to do is we need to find the maximum value on the left and then find the maximum value on the right to figure out the how many water units we can ha uh, we have for the current position. So all we need to do is we need to do first do a linear scan for the find to find the maximum value. In this case, the maximum value is here. We have three elements right we oh, sorry we have value of three in this case th that's the maximum elevation point what we're going to do then is we're basically just going to start from zero in this case start from the left right work our way up to the um the right the maximum on the right in this case this is going to be our maximum on the right so we're going to start from zero and for each iteration we're just going to redefine our left max right so we're so this is going to be our current pointer our pointer is going to point to point to here right we're going to say well um starting from here we're going to redefine our max our left max right in this case there the left max in this case is going to be zero so the minimum between zero and three in this case is zero zero minus current height is also zero so the maximum uh, the the the, um, the number of water units that we can have at the current position is zero right it makes sense and then we just keep going and then keep going until we get to this point where we uh, we know that the maximum water units we can have is zero because this is the highest elevation. And if this is the highest elevation, we guarantee that there's no water units, right? Because this is the highest and there's no left and the right to, to support that, right? So in this case, there's zero water units. So what we're going to do is we're going to traverse up to this current point and that's it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to swap around we're going to say this is our left max and we're going to go from the last element right the last element on the array towards the left max right and then what we're going to do is we're just for each iteration we're going to redefine our right max so i think it's better to show you this in code i'm just gonna um i'm just gonna walk you through how we can do this in code for using two pointers way so again, our first step, right, remember, just to do a linear scan to find our maximum value, our maximum elevation point. 
the max is equal to, let's say, 0 initially. We're going to iterate each and every single element in the um, Let's also get a n, which is equal to height dot length. Dot length. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to iterate. And notice here we're trying, we're not here to get the value, we're trying to get the index. So what we're saying is this. If height at max is less than height at current position, right? What we're going to do is we're going to get max is equal to i, okay? We're going to get max is equal to the maximum elevation point or the maximum value, uh, maximum values index in the array. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to, once we have our maximum elevation point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start from the start from the left, all the way working towards the right max, right? The max is gonna be on our, our right. We're starting from the first element in the array. So left, right? So in this case, the left max, okay, is equal to zero initially. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start. I is equal to zero. I is less than max, okay. So the maximum index, so the maximum elevation point index. What we're going to do is we're just going to um, first, right, compare the max, um, the left maximum value with the uh, the current value, right? Because there could the current value could be also bigger than the max, um, the left max that we have already. So what we're going to do is left max. Uh, because left max is going to be the index, right? So in this case, if height at left max is less than height at current position, then what we're going to do is we're going to get left max is equal to i because we're dealing with index here. We're not dealing with value, right? Those ones here, this max, the left max, they're all index. They're not value. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to calculate the how many water units we have for the current position, right? Because we now we know our left max, right? And we also know the right max because we traverse the array, right? We're going from i all the way to max, okay? So then what we're going to do is we're going to have a variable called sum. Initially, it's zero, right? So sum is equal to sum plus the um, the minimum, right? Just like what we talked about, the minimum between the left max and the right max. Okay. Once we find the minimum between those two, what we're going to do then is we're going to um, minus the current height. Okay, once we minus the current height, this will give us the new sum, right? And then what we're going to do is we basically we basically get how many waters you know we can have up to this current position, right? Up to this current position, we pretty much get all the all the water using. We already calculate all the water units we can have up to the max. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to figure out the right side. In this case. What we're going to do is we're going to have a variable that is called right max, which is equal to zero. And then what we're going to do is we're going to start at n minus one, while i is less than the max, okay, i minus minus. Basically, we're just going to start from the last element working towards the maximum elevation point. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to say height at, um, at right max if it's less than the current position, right? If it's less than the current height, then what we're going to do is we're just going to get right max is equal to i, just like how we did here. If it's less than, we're just, we're just going to redefine our right max, right? And the sum 
right, is equal to the minimum of between the max, right, and the height of the right max. Now we're going to minus height at i. Okay, this will give us the new sum for the current um, up to um, for the current position, right? And then what we're going to do is we're just going to at the end we're just going to return sum. So we basically going from starting from the last element, working towards the highest elevation point. And we don't really have to touch the elevation point because we know that there's just like I mentioned there's no there's there's going to be zero water units at this point. Okay, because we know that this is the highest elevation point. There's no um, elevation that are that are larger than um, than this elevation point. So therefore, um, there's no uh, there's basically there's going to be zero um, water units. So let's try to run the code. Um, yeah, it should be n, right? So in this case. We're traversing the entire array. Let's try to submit. We have a wrong answer. Okay, so the reason why we're getting a wrong answer there is because we, uh, when we have the right max, it's actually going to start from the last element. So in this case, it's going to be equal to the index of n minus 1. Okay, so we're starting at the right max, right? So we're starting at the right max, and then we're just working towards um, in this case, we're starting from the last element, which is working towards the, um, the, the, um, the highest elevation point. So now if we were to run this code, okay, now let's submit. You can see we have our answer. So this is how we bring the space complexity down to constant, and then um, time, complexity, uh, time complexity in this case is going to be linear. Okay, so there you have it and thank you for watching.